Hey everybody, um, I'm just going to show you how I edit this session. So um, I've started with the clone and healing brush and I am removing all of the skin marks and um, things on his face that need to be removed. Just about finished. Some babies come out with flawless skin and then some babies have a little bit more skin acne, baby acne, to be removed. And sometimes it's better to just take it into Photoshop, but I will finish this up in Photoshop anyways. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to my brush and I'm going to sharpen his eyes and I'm going to click O so that you can see where I'm drawing on. And now I'm going to click New and Soften Skin B and that's just Clarity and Sharpness Reduced. And I'm going to click O just so that it shows up red where I'm brushing on. You want to make sure you don't get it on the lips or the eyelashes. Okay, and next I'm just going to go down to my hue and saturation and luminance. I'm going to play with the hue first just to see how much it reduces the reds. showing you before and after. Now I'm going to click on luminance. I don't want to brighten him up too much because then it just looks takes away the shadows and whatnot. Okay now I'm going down to sharpening and I'm going to use the mask. So remember to hold the alt key down and that's what I'm doing right now to see how sharp I want his skin and I only want the edges sharp. Now I'm going to click on my lens correction. I'm not doing a vignette. And now I'm going to click on my camera profile, camera neutral. And now I'm going to adjust my exposure and my blacks. That's going to give some decent contrast without using the contrast tool. I've decided to crop it in Photoshop. And that's just a before and after. Now I'm going to edit in Photoshop. And my computer is really slow right now, so it'll just take a second. Okay, so now I'm going to make a duplicate layer by clicking Command J. And I am going to press Command T and this allows me to stretch the image but the important thing to remember is to hold the shift key down because that it doesn't distort or warp the image it keeps it intact when you're stretching it so instead of having to clone out that little section I've just decided to to stretch the image in Photoshop with Command T but remember you have to do that with a duplicate layer And I flattened it. Now I'm clicking on Aaron Toll's Paint Box Action Red Remover Subdue. I'm going to make sure my brush is on white and I'm on the black box. And now I'm just about 30% opacity and I'm going to reduce all the red skin on his face. You don't want to overdo it either because you don't want him to look like a ghost. You don't want him to look 
discolored and you don't want to take away all the shadows. Sometimes I'll do it and I'll reduce the opacity of the action and that'll help sometimes. And now I'm clicking on my favorite blot with Aaron Tool's action and I'm going to run it at about 30% because I don't want it to be too strong. I really like the tones. And I flattened it and now I'm going to click free because I like the creaminess of the action. And I'm reducing it to about 20% because I don't want it to be too intense. Now I click on the skin healing tool. You can also use the patch tool. And I'm just going to clean up a little bit more of his skin. I would recommend making a duplicate layer by clicking Command J. Normally I do that. I don't know why I didn't this time. But I recommend it so that if you make a mistake or an error, then you can just unclick it or erase it. I use a duplicate layer for everything usually. I do try to get everything because you don't want anything distracting your image. Now I'm going to click on frequency separation and this action is very cool because it actually um, separates the layers of color from texture and so you can actually use this as well for, for red removal which maybe I'll do in another video. But I decided to just use it on the blanket to remove some of the bumps. And so when you click on the LF layer, then you're going to click on the lasso tool and you're just going to select small sections and then click on blur, Gaussian blur. And you're going to adjust the strength of the blur. You don't want it to be crazy strong because then it's really apparent. Okay, so you have to keep doing that, but you can make a shortcut by, co by clicking Command F, but it's going to take your last strength that you used. It, when you use the um, shortcut, it doesn't give you the option to, to change the strength. And so as you notice here, this corner is going to be too strong. I make it too strong, so then I have to go in and I have to fix it after. So I just clicked Command F and now I'm going to fix this one spot. That's still too strong. So I'm just clicking on and off just to see the differences that the image looks like with the frequency separation. And see, you notice how when you get too close to an edge, then it'll blur the edge. And that just doesn't look good. So you don't want that. So I'm lowering the, the strength of the blur to try and reduce that hard edge, but I just don't like the way it's turning out. So I'm clicking on the LF layer and I'm actually going to just make a little mask so that I can erase the, sp the hard edges. Make sure that you do it in the opposite color of the box. So I'm using a black brush at a low opacity just to reduce the edges 
so that it's not so visible, but um, the blur is still there. And then I'm going to flatten. Command J to make another layer. And see how I'm, I've gone up and I'm changing the mode of my brush and I'm going down to color. And now I'm going to get the eyedropper tool and I'm going to select a color from the wrap. And I am going to actually use the brush to paint on the color of the, of the gray on the bonnet just to match it to the right shade. This only works when you are doing generally like the same colors to just change the shades. If you go from like cream to gray, it's going to look really weird. It's not going to look as normal and you're not going to be able to really get away with it. If you were to go from maybe cream to like a blush pink, that might work, but it also might come off fluorescent looking. But you could go from a, a, a pink to a red, or you could go from a green to a blue or something. So that's just matching, and that helps sometimes when you don't have a perfect match with your props, and you want to tie the two props together. That's a great, handy little tool to do. And so I'm just making sure I don't have it on any of the edges, and then I'm going to flatten it once I'm satisfied. I'm going to Command J again, and I am going to do Liquify, and I'm going to round out all those hard edges. It just makes it a little more appealing to the eye when you round out those little baby bodies. Looks better. Get rid of the pointy corners round it out and one really great thing to learn with the liquify brush is that the smaller the bump the smaller the brush you use the bigger the bump the bigger the brush you use so if it's a small little corner you're going to use a small little point to push it in if it's a big section that you want to push out then you're going to use a larger size liquify brush and it does take some time to get the hang of it but it's better to be on the more natural side than to overdo it. So that's the great thing about making a duplicate layer. If you don't like it, just do it again. See how it just, it makes it prettier looking, more pleasing. So I like that. So now I'm going to flatten it. Oh, first I am erasing the hard edge that was pulled up from the liquefying. Flattened it now. And I'm going to do the U-Pick with Aaron Toll's Fades, and I'm picking a shaded spot from behind the baby's head. And I'm just going to erase the fade off of the main focus point, but not off of the whole image. I like it on the wrap still, I just don't want it to be too strong. And I'm just going to lower the opacity a little bit. Flatten it. And now I'm all done.